Welcome back to Road to Fire. We're a family of four documenting our journey to fire, financial independence, retire early. Let's chat about our M1 Finance stock portfolio. I will share details on our entire M1 portfolio, outline our gains and losses across our stock holdings, and how we plan to leverage this account in the future with all will numbers like always, so please hang with me. Now, I don't know how to pick individual stocks. I'm not a financial expert, advisor, or CPA. I'm not a fund manager, day, or option trader. But I can read financial statements and see what money moves the company is doing and why, but by no means am I a financial guru. I'm just a small timer from the Midwest who loves spreadsheets and is trying to save and invest my way to early retirement. I don't want to live my latter years worrying about money or working in a job that doesn't give me purpose. But when I opened this account, I thought I was going to hit it big. I don't know what I was really thinking, but I kind of wanted to find the next IT stock and cash out quickly. Not quickly, but fast. I wanted to be like everyone else or what I thought everyone else was doing. I wanted to have big gains and take risks while I was young. So I would spend my days reading financial articles on this investment, look up their ratings or PE ratio against their industry. I even joined those investing groups where people shared their recent buys. It was like I was trying to fit in with the cool kids when it came to investing. After reading several financial books, I quickly realized this was not the path for me. But suppose individual stocks is your path. Kudos to you. I envy your grit and your grind, but I've learned the hard way through losses you will see that stock picking isn't for me. Luckily, we've made the switch early enough to not disrupt or impact our overall fire journey. Today, our portfolio is almost entirely in one fund and it's working well for us. No plans to shift our strategy at all. Okay, here's our total M1 finance portfolio at a whopping $6,900. We moved all of our assets from Robinhood in June 2021 to M1 finance to have more control of our asset segments. The transition was not easy, as there were holdings I had in Robinhood that were not available in M1 Finance, but I'll do it all over again. M1 Finance is known for its slices and pies, and I wanted to create slices for different investing objectives. Slices help me categorize my investments under one portfolio, and then within each slice, I can create different pies. I'm sure other brokerage accounts have the same feature, but I love how M1 Finance laid it out. Side note, at this time, I thought I was some investing guru making investing pies, and I realized that this was definitely not the path for me. Okay, so I divided this portfolio into two slices or sections. I created a dividends portfolio when I thought I was going to pursue dividends this way, and that didn't work out. We still get monthly dividends, but not from this account. Today, it is up about $1,000 or 38%, so not bad overall. I then created an inheritance slice, and this was meant to be a portfolio for my nieces and nephews. I've always envisioned myself giving and giving and giving, especially as I got older. I feel I'm called to give and to give money specifically. My ultimate goal was to eventually leave this earth with nothing to my name. But one of my life goals is to personally bless all of my nieces and nephews with a solid graduation gift, like a $1,000 check or a laptop for college or whatever path they choose. So I set up a slice for them. Within the slice, there are individual pies for each of my nieces and nephews. Right now, it's down about $900 or 31.8%. It's almost a wash across both slices, but still a bit embarrassing to see overall. But how different this would have looked if I had put everything into an index fund, especially in January 2021. So here's a look at the entire life of the portfolio. We started with around $5,500 and have about $6,900. It has steadily grown, but the net cash flow shows that it's not necessarily entirely earnings. I had all intentions when I set this up to give it my time and energy, but I definitely neglected this account big time. So here are our latest contributions. As you can see, there is not a lot of history. It looks like I barely contributed to this account over the last almost three years. The last contribution I made was in December 2023 for $150, and before that, it was six months earlier on June 2nd, 2022. Now, in my defense, the original goal was to send about $250 a month to this account, which would be an evenly sliced between the two portions and the subsequent pies, but that didn't work out. In 2021, we were still paying off debt, looking for new jobs, we recently moved to a new home, and I was in the thick of this YouTube journey. So yes, I did lose a bit of focus. But one thing is for sure, individual stocks are not as the set it and forget it as index funds, and that's something that I wish I would have known earlier. But I might be acting a tad bit dramatic. Because here's a snapshot of our portfolio, including our M1 finance account that is found within our brokerage account or our bridge account for FIRE. As of March 29th of this year, the total amount in these accounts was $109,000, which represents about 16% of our total portfolio. 
So our M1 Finance account is about $6,900, which is about 1% of our total portfolio and about 6.5% of our after-tax brokerage account. So it is very small amount overall, but it's still money. I used to call this account my play account, but that was just me being very ignorant because money is money no matter how much it is. Despite this account being only 1% of our total portfolio, I should still treat it like I would any other investment. Our goal is to get our after-tax brokerage accounts to over $1 million, as this would be the first account we tap into after FIRE. We do have ways to go, but this M1 finance account could be a lever if we contribute and focus on it moving forward. But I'm embarrassed to share my stock picks or to share my holdings in each individual slice. I mean, they are not penny stocks. Yes, I have invested in penny stocks almost 15 years ago, and that ended in a disaster, as you can imagine. But I can admittedly say there are some stocks in our M1 finance portfolio that I have no idea what they do, how they make a profit, or why I invested in them. Yikes, don't be like me. If you choose to invest in individual stocks, do the research and at least be able to explain what the company does, what differentiates them, how they make a profit, and why. Oh, I wish I could say I was young and dumb, but this was just a few years ago, and I knew better. I know better. I read the books, listened to the podcast, and was deep into the five blog funnel hole, but I still wanted to expedite the entire FIRE journey process. I didn't want to wait for 10 years or 15 years to get to FIRE. I wanted to get there much faster. Yes, I fell into the microwave, insta world we live in now. I knew better. I still do. I know that wealth takes time despite our media outlets telling us otherwise, but here we are. I feel overall that individual stocks is one part valuation and potential and the other part timing or getting it at the right price. I am realizing that this feels too much like gambling for me and I don't gamble. But if I could do it all over again, I'll focus more on a few key blue chip stocks that have a history of stability, profitability and a solid cash management system versus picking many small companies without strong track records. Okay, and although we are now a one fund investor or we have a one fund investing strategy, I do see the draw and appeal of individual stocks as the return potential is always going to be much higher. Okay, let's jump into our holdings. Okay, so here are our holdings in our dividend slice. Our largest holding is ExxonMobil, and yes, I know what they do. They have had the highest gain over the last few years. We then own IBM and then Coke, which has also had positive returns. Next is Gladstone Investment, which is up about $100. But let me stop for a second. What if we had invested everything in ExxonMobil versus across all of these different companies? Just the thought. Then maybe my stock picking wouldn't have been so bad overall. Okay, next we then have EPD and O, a few other smaller holdings that have struggled on and off. We then have AT&T, Visor, Warner Brothers, and then Take Two. Now, I don't know what this company does. This is probably one of the embarrassing stock picks I've had in this dividends holding. And I'm pretty certain that I got this pick from one of those investing groups. This slice has a value of just over $3,300 and is a weighted return of over 37% for the life of this portfolio. Overall, despite my neglect, this slice has had positive returns since we opened it and over $430 in dividends over the last three years. It isn't great, but it is something. Okay, here's where things get a bit upside down. Here is our holdings for the inheritance accounts, which is the other half of our two slice portfolio. Our top holding is Helix Energy, and this made sense to me. I used to work in the energy industry, and I knew a lot about this company from way back when. I then invested in PayPal, which I am familiar with. Okay, the next are the airlines. Moment of silence for airline stocks. I invested in both JetBlue and United, and both have not been doing well in this portfolio. I've learned that the airline industry next to the restaurant industry has slim margins, limited cash on hand, and a whole lot of debt. Definitely lessons learned with these two stock picks. The next stock came from the investing group YOLO and so did NEO. I'm surprised to see AMD here. It looks like I had a hunch a few years back. Now I must have been reading something and now I wish I had doubled down on that stock. And the last three, I don't have any words to explain those choices. Cannabis was big, but I don't smoke, never smoked. Um, I was into farmer stocks. My brother had a whole group around farmer stocks and how they were trying to get approved by the FDA and what was the next one that was going to pop. All irrational stock picks on my end. Again, don't be like me. But it is very interesting to see the hodgepodge of companies in this slice. If I had done things slightly different, I would have suggested to just sticking to an industry, learning more about that and then investing in that single industry. And today, this slice of the portfolio has a value of about $3,500 
and a weighted rate of return of negative 34%. So definitely not a win for this side of the portfolio. Okay, so what should we do here? There are three things you can do with any portfolio. You can either buy, hold, or sell. So option one, we choose to buy more or increase our contributions. We'll focus on putting more dollars into the dividend slice and leave the other slice alone. We will almost ignore the other slice, not the intentions, but the portfolio. Option two, we can hold. Don't add any contributions and don't sell anything. We just let the investments ride on their own. This is pretty much what we have been doing. Or option three, we sell it all and shift the funds to good old VTSAX, pay our dues and cut our losses. This will help us clean up our brokerage account and eliminate one more platform in our sea of platforms that we manage. I'm not leaning towards any option. Okay, I kind of lied. I'd like to hold for now and see how things shake out. But what option would you take? Share your thoughts in the comments below. I love the insights from this community and collectively someone might have the right next steps for us. $7,000 is a good chunk of money and can be put to better use somewhere else. I wish I would have pursued the dividend angle just a wee bit more, but the past is just that, the past. My husband and I have talked about this account. We always talk about things and we always go through things monthly in our money dates. And his stance is similar to mine. Let's just wait it out. I no longer have the get rich tomorrow motivation tugging at me. I do still love M1 Finance overall. I love their user face, the customer service, and the platform in general. I still want to be the rich auntie in about 15 years handing out laptops or $1,000 checks for graduation for all of my nieces and nephews. And right now we have about a dozen of them. But what has changed is my motivation. In the beginning, what was driving me in this fire journey is leaving corporate America. But things have changed. I am now focused on building wealth so that I can give, 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 and give some more. I would love to have all of our expenses covered to live our rich life, as Ramit says, but then have more than enough to help others get to theirs as well. Of course, it would start with those closest to me and move further and further out until the ends of the earth. My original thought of the inheritance slice is still there. It's just that it might look a little different moving forward. Now, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. But don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe below. Until next time.